How's everybody doing today? Hope you guys are having a good day so far. It's like we've got a great crowd here in the room. I know we'll probably have some more people logging in in the next minute or so, uh, but we will um, go ahead and get started here in about one minute. Looks like um, here's a quick look at the glow. Looks like we've got the world pretty well covered. So um, we appreciate you guys taking the time to be here today. What I'm going to do is just play a very uh, brief video on the Trading Pub, and then I'll uh, turn things over to Larry. He's going to be teaching a class today, so we appreciate him being the, being here. Uh, Tom, thank you very much. Doing great. Having a good day. So we'll play this quick video, and then we'll get started shortly. Okay, <laughs> well that's really right, well, I like that. Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. So, uh, all right, guys. Well, uh, I would like to take this time to introduce uh, Trading Pub regular and a friend of ours is uh, Larry Gaines. Had the opportunity to actually see Larry speak live in New York at the Traders Expo, uh, which was a uh, definite treat. There was a room full of people uh, gathered early in the morning on a uh, Tuesday morning to hear Larry, and so enjoyed getting to see that but uh, Larry's going to be teaching the class today uh, we are going to record the class and uh, look forward to uh, posting that on our website which is www.tradingpub.com under the free education tab um, give me one second. let me just type something to Mary there alright so again we'll post a copy of the recording to tradingpub.com under free education hopefully get it posted uh, by early tomorrow morning so Larry, at this time, I'll turn things over to you, and you can take it away. Thanks a lot, Morgan, and uh, thank everybody uh, for being here today. Um, got a lot to cover here. Um, I like to um, trade futures and uh, weekly options, so I'm going to spend most of the time here today uh, on our system, the way we go about trading, and you know, a lot of weekly option strategies try to get through as much as I can here in the amount of time we have. So here's uh, my link. Uh, and you can get, I've got some really good ebooks that you can get uh, free. So take advantage of that. So let's get started. Um, so today, basically, I'm going to go over kind of progressions for successful weekly option trading, the essential tools you need. And um, before I get started, though, I'd like to also, you know, go through this disclaimer that uh, this is for educational purpose only. And uh, any advice or anything that I show as far as uh, trades or um, ideas are just you know not be construed as recommendations and this just for training and education so uh, here's a free ebook it's a really good 15 option trading strategies you can just go to that URL that uh, that I gave you and that's one of them and I've got a really good ebook on futures so you have your choice or you can have both of them for free so please take advantage of that um, I'm also, you know, having a special here today just for you guys, and I'm doing, uh, you know, going to be talking mostly about options, weekly options, and I've got a great little course. Uh, it's about option trading made simple. Uh, I sell it for 247 on my site, 
and if you you know would like to get it, it's 147 uh, today. Um, so you can also take advantage of that. And let me put that up for you. Uh, if, take advantage of that URL there. Here's where you go to get that. So anyway, it's what I called uh, option trading made simple, and um, it'll teach you how to you know select your option strikes for just outright option trading or spread trading as well. Um, so here's the uh, URL which I just posted, uh, just powercycletrading.com slash traderspub. And I'm also having a boot camp this coming Saturday, March the 9th, I believe it is. And I'm going to you know, talk to you guys a little bit today about weekly options, but there's not enough time in, in one hour to really get into the nuts and bolts of them. But this, this boot camp will be just strictly on weekly options. So if you're interested in that, um, you can go to powercycletrading.com slash bootcamp slash weekly. Let me see if I can get that real quick. Uh, give you that as well. Just one second. Um, bear with me. Here we go. I'll come back to that. Oh, here it is. Just get all this out of the way and then we can get into everything here. So, so first off, I'm going to go through you know my essential tools that I use for my trading. And the first thing I always start out with is what I call my trading foundation. And then I'm going to go through how to let winning trades come to you, how to capitalize on trend, trend break, breakouts. I love to trade momentum breakouts. And my favorite trading tools, which are weekly options and futures. But today I'm going to concentrate really on weekly options and how you can get you know, higher returns using less capital with these type of options and a secret weapon that we use at Power Cycle Trading. So let me just give you a little bit of background about me and who I am. Um, well, trading is, is my passion. Uh, I knew back in the 20s, I was fortunate enough to, to uh, get with some really great companies. Uh, I, I've been in the trading industry as a professional for over three decades, and uh, I've you know actively traded in the financial security markets, commodities, and everything pretty much. I became executive vice president of one of the largest international oil trading companies in the world, and I managed their international oil trading and securities group uh, out of Bermuda. And we traded and managed, and I managed billions of dollars worth of oil, foreign exchange, and financial market derivatives. Uh, my trading group, we were one of the first to actually trade over-the-counter options on cargoes of foreign crude oil and we trade millions of barrels of these contracts. Um, you know having this experience uh, I've always had a kind of a quest to develop my own system uh, that could work regardless of what the markets were doing and uh, this is pretty much what I've done here at Power Cycle Trading which is my uh, educational service for uh, options and futures. So. I put together what I learned over my career and I created a four-step model uh, that we use in our trading room um, and it's um, you know it's a great model to help us trade either day trades swing trades or whatever so it's a, a model that's avail available to my members and it's a whole lot less than I was paid when I was trading professionally um, I also wanted to you know set up some interaction with other traders. So I introduced and I put together a live trading room. So we have a great trading room, virtual trading room. Um, and you know, trading is not just about your model, your trading methodology. Trading is a never ending journey of learning and interaction. And, and this process is essential uh, in order to you know, find people that you can learn from and pass on things that you know. So the exchange of information and ideas is a huge part of the progression of becoming a successful trader or even a great trader. Uh, so today I want to give you a few of my trading tools and uh, secrets that hopefully will help you become a more successful trader. So let's just go, I'm going to outline these five essential tools. So the first thing I always start off with every day, and, and usually at the end of the day, I'll start off with what my, I call my trading foundation. And so what this is, is a top-down market technical analysis. Uh, I started doing uh, this analysis but using fundamentals about 20 years ago. Uh, at that time we didn't really have any great technicals so pretty much everything you were doing on TradeSide was based on fundamentals. 
So what we would do is we would first start off with the macro big picture and then look all the way down to the short term or intraday. So what I put together was uh, what I called the top down approach and this begins at the top and the first step is to determine the big picture trend. So I do this by using our trading model, the power cycle model, uh, but you know whatever you use for your trading you can use that, whatever methodology and then you know do that in order to uh, look to see what the cycle trend is that you can identify. So, you know, if you know what the trend is, then, you know, as an investor or trader, you can plan on how to allocate your capital. You know, if you're in a trend that is up, you would probably want to be more aggressive in buying market dips and holding for greater returns. Uh, if the trend is down, you'd want to be less invested with a larger cash position and more defensive. So, you know, we're currently approaching some, you know, record highs. So uh, you have to take these kind of things in consideration look at the macro big picture. So what I do is I break it down into five different time frames and it makes it very easy for you to look at trends. And the first time frame I use is the macro and I use this by measuring a monthly time frame. The second is the long term which is measured by the weekly. Third is medium term measured by daily. Fourth intermediate measured by hourly. And we'll use the hourly and the daily to use for our swing trades and then short term is, you know, day trades, minutes and ticks. So I'm going to show you just a quick review here of our, um, you know, our charts to show you where our trends are currently based on our model. Represents a whole month of data or our pricing. And we've been in a macro trend based on our system since January 1st, 2012. So we've had a huge move up. And uh, so that, that helps you, you know, plan if you're an investor. Do you want to hold positions? Do you want to take profits? You know, it just keeps you uh, Uh, in the market as far as having a trading plan or investment plan. So we're currently long the January. You can see a nice little trend break out there and currently neutral from about three weeks ago. And then today we had this big breakout to the upside that you can see and we'll go, go into a little bit more in detail. Uh, and then on the medium term time frame, the daily, we're currently long. Went long yesterday right at the close. You saw that momentum build right into the close yesterday and that kicked in our system long. And we also had a nice little trend breakout and a big extension to the upside today. So next thing I'm going to go to is how to let winning trades come to you. So as a professional trader, I've spent thousands of hours and dollars on trading of my own over the course of my, my uh, professional career. I discovered that there were five key elements that had to be in place regardless of the trading system or methodology that you use. So let's just review those things so you can, you know, take take away with you today uh, some of these guidelines that will help you uh, in your trading. So what you want to do is have a plan that governs all your actions. You want to be disciplined and implementing to that plan. You want to definitely learn to be patient based on the model that you're using. You want to allow the trades to come to you instead of chasing trades. You want to create structure in your trading with set goals, rules, time frames, work hours, and risk control. Now these are you know simple guidelines, but sometimes the simplest things are the most difficult to put into action, and especially in trading. As you know, it's a, it's a lot of it is mental, so you have to be very patient and have a good mental attitude in order to be a successful trader. So uh, what I recommend is having some kind of trading meth, uh, model or system where you, where you have rules that are clearly defined. And if you have these rules, it makes it easier to implement them. So we use the power cycle trading model that I've developed, and it's a rule-based system. And it's based on uh, four powerful indicators that we use momentum. So this provides us our guidelines and rules which allows us to let the trades come to us. 
and that's key. You don't want to chase trades. You want to let try to you know know what your setups are. Let the trades come to you, and then execute. So know your guidelines. Know your model. Now for all swing trades and day trades that we do, we will always use two to four different time frames for our trade setups based on our model. And this is what we call a trade confirming process, which allows us you know to kind of take our emotions out of the trade. And it gives us good confirmation so we don't rely on one time frame. Uh, the combination uh, has created a trading system that uh, for us has a very high winning percentage and it's really ideal for directional trades, for swing trades and day trades. Um, but again, it's only achieved by incorporating these five elements and in, in having that discipline. So the end, the end result uh, by using these is that you're you're making your trading decisions on your model or your trading methodology rather than your emotions and fears. And so what happens, you know, if you get your emotions and fear in it, you're going to do something wrong, you're going to overtrade, you're going to chase trades, and you're going to end up, you know, losing money or giving back the profits that you made. So just today I've I had a pretty, uh, I've been busy with some other projects, but today the first uh, hour of the day I just did some futures trades on the NASDAQ, and, you know, this is based on our trade model, our setups. And the first trade, you know, $60 contract, I lost 20, then I made 25, and I made 50. And uh, so this was like in the first hour of the day. Uh, so cumulative profit, and this is based just one contract, $115. So that was on futures today. And so that's a 23% return cumulative today just for these four trades uh, based on, you know, day trading margin for futures. So uh, this kind of gives you an example, you know, of, of the system that I have, what we did today, and, and I'll apply the same system to weekly options, but uh, today I was just kind of focused on the futures. So now I'm going to go through, you know, how to capitalize on breakouts. So one thing I want to pass on to you, uh, this is a really great resource, and it's called sectorspider.com, sectorspider.com. And what you can do with this, it's great when you're in a market like this, when you're seeing powerful rotation. So you can follow where the money's going, and you can find you know other areas like right now. It's a kind of getting to be a, a a stock pickers type market because we've had such momentum moves on some of the big stocks like Google uh, and some of the others that you know you want to kind of want to look for other areas maybe that are not quite um, that are might cycling low that are ready to break out or ready to move higher that have really maybe lagged a little bit. So what you can do with this particular little resource is just go in here and you click on sector sector tracker right here, and then what it'll pull up is uh, a, a a breakdown of the nine sectors of the S&P 500 based on ETFs, and so you can go through one day, five days, week, two weeks, months, years, and you can see where the money's going. So here, when I took this screenshot, this was back in November. Uh, on this particular five-day period, you can see that the money was starting to flow into technology. Was, and then you can go in here, it's really cool, because you can click on the ETF, and then you can see what stocks are moving. So this can help you create a watch list of things that you want to trade. So, you know, take advantage of that and, and play with it. It's a really great resource. The other thing that uh, we incorporate in our uh, trading model uh, is, is the use of trend lines for breakouts and identifying breakouts. And the key to trend lines is that you uh, learn how to draw a trend line the same way each and every time. You want to draw it where it's kind of a mechanical, where you can actually incorporate it in your system and make it automated. And so basically, you know, trend lines are just basically supply and demand, which dictates price, and it creates, you know, with the, it creates a trend line based on the points that you choose. So they're universally used, but the construction can be very dissimilar. So for drawing my trend lines, I, I use a, a rule-based system, which is called pivot points, which makes drawing them mechanical and systematic. And we've been able to automate this into our system where we don't have to do it mechanically or manually. So um, the difficulty with trend lines, you'd think it's really easy, but if you think about it, most people draw a trend line from the left side of the chart from history to the right. So you should be drawing it from the right side of your chart over here to history. So we'll go through that, and I'll show you some examples to make it clear. Intuitively, it's incorrect to do it from past price to present. You want to do it from current. Current price is most important. 
So first thing you do, we'll do a supply pivot point, which will be a, a price high that is not exceeded by the prior price or price immediately after. And this is what I call pivot highs. So you get your pivot highs and then you connect your lines. So here's a simple example. Here's a first pivot point right here. So you can see here, here's the right of the chart. So most current price from the right in rather than historic price from left to right. So find that pivot high here. So this pivot, this, this high of this bar, this is a five minute bar. It's higher than the bar before, higher than the bar after. And you go up to the top, find the next one. Here's the next pivot point, higher than the bar before and after. So that's pivot, that's your pivot high two. Extend your point, your, your line from there, draw it down line, which you can do each and every time the same way. You don't have to jump around, oh, you know, from here to there. So look at look if you did it from, you know, history from here. I'll, just a good example here. If you took this line here and extended your your line down, you know, here's where your trend line would be. See the difference? So you or you could, you know, you might you might draw it from here down. So it makes it for a mechanical way to do it and we've incorporated the system and it's automated. Um, so I'll show you that. Let me get rid of this. Um, so that's uh, that's the basics. Um, now this is our system. These are automatically drawn and they're based on the same uh, principle which we programmed into our, our system. And this is FFIV, a five minute chart. Here's a pivot high, pivot high. Trend lines automatically extended. Our cycle model went long here. You can see a trend line break and a nice move to the upside based on a weekly. And this is IYT transport ETF. Our system drew through the trend lines here. That was automated. Pivot high, pivot high. Here's our system went long here. Our cycle model, trend line break, boom, explosive move to the upside. So it makes it real easy when you do it this way. So here's just another example. Here's on a 400 tick chart. We use the 400 tick. We use different tick charts, time inter intervals. For, uh, this is on Visa. So here's a pivot high, pivot high. System went long here, trend line break. So what I love is when our system gives us a long signal and I see a trend line, I know that there's potential for a big momentum break to the upside or downside. So that's a, that's a, a pivot point for a supply. Now this is a reverse. This is your demand trend line. And it's just the opposite. So the lower price that is is um, lower than the prior and the price immediately after. So here you go. Come in from your right. Here's your first pivot low. So it's lower than the one before and after. Go down. Next pivot low. Lower than the one before and after. Extend your line. Our system actually went short there. Broke this demand line. Demand pushing price up creates that, that uh, trend line. And you have a big move to the downside. So here's automated shot at it. Here's, you know, pivot low, pivot low, extended trend line, boom to the downside. That's a weekly. That was on Lulu. Here's another example on Baidu. Trend line automatically drawn in with our system, break. So this is just one little part, piece of what we do with our model. Uh, the other thing that's important, uh, in my opinion, for trading or to the use and the proper use of moving averages. I'm not going to go into much detail about them, but what you want to do with your moving averages is, you know, it helps you to confirm your trend breakouts. We use it as a confirming type of indicator, and it helps to establish a continuation of a price trend. You can manage it by using uh, these trend lines or by using your moving averages. So I will manage a lot of my trades by the use of a moving average or a combination of moving averages. So the next thing is, I just wanted to go through uh, our secret trading weapon. So we have a trading model that we put together. So um, integrated some other things to it, actually, uh, over the time uh, that I've, I've developed this thing about two years ago, and we've added to it, so making it better and better. But this is what we've currently come up with. This is what we call, this is our power breakout scanner. And we've got this scanner developed. It's automated, so we can we can uh, scan across you know the universe of stocks, futures, forex, um, you know cross uh, currencies and everything pretty much. 
the uh, parameters in our model, then we can scan and we can look for different trade setups. So this is kind of what it looks like. We've got a matrix and we, we can scan it based on a five minute, well, based on from one minute to a monthly time frame. So this has 15, 5, 15, 30, all the way to a month. And we're looking for either breakout setups or cycle high, cycle low. So we can actually scan for those and put them on a watch list. And we also have this with uh, auto, auto alerts, uh, audio alerts, sound alerts. So, you know, if you're sitting at your desk and you move away, we can have a, alerts go off from sound. So, you know, what we can do then is when we get a uh, certain setup scanner, uh, we can pull up the charts. I can pull up any time frame I want, and I can look at the chart immediately to see what's going on. Uh, here's our another uh, quick view of it. I'm not going to spend too much time, but it's just kind of something that's really helped us as far as uh, selecting trades, uh, day trades, swing trades, longer term. And it's based on a weighted scale system, um, and it's really cool. So. It's available to our members. Um, so this is just a quick shot, snapshot of just one component of it. This is a for a volatility squeeze breakout component of it. We can scan. This was on a five-minute time frame on Apple back on the 27th. Um, you can see it consolidated in here, had a trend line break to the upside. So uh, here's another shot of Apple, another different time um, on the 14th. Uh, of February, some fired long, boom, up she goes. Here's another shot of Apple. We trade a lot of Apple weeklies. Uh, lately, it's it's kind of lost a little bit of its luster, luster but uh, you know it'll be back. So here's another shot back on the 16th. A really nice squeeze there, break of the trend line, up she goes. Um, so you know this is something that uh, we've incorporated in our trading. It really helps. Um, so I won't spend much time. I just want to show that that is our trading. Our, our secret weapon. So, uh, if you're interested, you know, come join us. Uh, here's a shot at Apple. Here's a 60-minute break to the downside. Trend lines are in. Nice squeeze. Break to the downside. Um, and here's one on crude. So, you know, it works across anything. We can we can scan the futures. We can scan, uh, you know, Nasdaq 100, whatever. Uh, so. Now I'm going to go into my favorite trading tools. First off, you know we trade a lot of futures. We like futures because the the leverage that they offer, uh, the liquidity, you, you know, they're tight spreads and everything. So we'll trade the Nasdaq 100 quite a bit. Um, gold futures. Several of the guys like to trade the gold futures do quite well. But uh, when I see a good setup for weeklies, I really like the benefits that uh, the weekly options offer. So I'm going to go through those and show you some examples as well. So. First off, if, you, if you're not familiar with weeklies, um, they now account for 12 to more probably percent of the 300 million option contracts traded every month. And um, they're, you know, they've been around for several years now, but they're still a little bit new. A lot of people are not familiar with them. A lot of people are scared of options. And then weekly options, they have no, no clue at all. Um, but you, know, you can trade some of the more exciting stocks like Apple, Google, Amazon using weeklies. And which makes it accessible to you know um, a person that doesn't have the big capital account to take advantage of the high price shares. So these particular type stocks now make up 40% of the option volume. You know Apple, Google, Amazon, those types. Now the weeklies uh, are available each Thursday. They'll come out every Thursday, and then they expire the following Friday, not the next Friday, but the the week after. So they have eight days of life to a weekly option. Um, so, and also then in November of 2012, uh, they expanded, and now you can get you can get consecutive five straight weeks uh, for weeklies on select stocks and ETFs, which is really great now. So basically, what this does for you is it just gives you a lot more opportunities um, for trading in a lot uh, of different ways that you can hedge yourself or you know use these for producing income. So you can see here, this is just an Apple option chain. You can see, you know, it goes like every week. So you don't have to do like a monthly. You've got these weeklies in between the monthly. So every week you've got an opportunity that you can do some type of strategy if you'd like. Uh, the other key to these weeklies are there, um, since expiration is within days or week, uh, 
within days, you can um, buy these weeklies at certain points during the, the, their life span for very, very cheap. So when you get to the last you know, two days, and especially on the expiration day, you can buy these weeklies for as little as $2 a contract or 10 And I'll show you some examples of what can happen when you can find these type of uh, cheap setups. They're like winning the lottery sometimes. Uh, they have unlimited profit potential because they can, based on the low cost of capital, they can, based on that capital cost, they can move 500 to 1,000 percent or more, um, in, you know, within minutes or within a, you know, several uh, half an hour or less. And that's uh, if you contrast that with regular options, you can't get that kind of potential movement. Uh, they're easily traded securities. Uh, they trade just like stocks. Uh, the thing that's so great about them is that they bring you 52 times a year to profit from, you know, whatever type of option strategies you're using, directional or, or non-directional. Uh, so you get a lot more opportunities using weeklies than you do with just a regular monthly. Um, you know, options, I don't know how many of you guys trade options, um, but options have managed to get kind of a bad reputation over the years uh, despite being used by pretty much all the professionals. Um, and a lot of it's because the education offered, it seems too difficult or complex that uh, new traders are simply overwhelmed. They're trying to learn, you know, the basics of, you know, charts and everything else. And then this, you know, options is just kind of one more thing that's to learn that maybe is a little bit too much. Uh, so a lot of times you're kind of scared away from it. But uh, I put together what I call the practical way of trading options. And... It works great for us because we will really concentrate on the direction of the market and then uh, if you have a simplistic way to select your strikes based on you know direction makes it easier. You don't have to learn all the Greeks and everything like that. All you need to know is direction and then this course that I put together that I'm offering to you guys, Option Trading Made Simple, will help you select the strike prices real, uh, real easy. So by using uh, option delta and market timing, uh, we've been able to, you know, put together a great system uh, for taking advantage of the weeklies, uh, which I'm going to go through with you now. Um, and this is going to be, you know, how you can get significantly higher returns with less capital, and that really comes down to leverage at an extreme low cost. Now, leverage, you know, can cut both ways. It can be uh, very profitable to use high ex leverage or it can really hurt you bad. So what you have to do is to identify your risk and then be able to manage that risk. So what I like to do, I'm a fairly conservative trader. I like to find risk type trades and, and cheap type trades. And so that's kind of what I'm always sniffing around trying to find. So let's just go through first off the mechanics of the options and the leverage that they provide. So basically, it's, it's the simplicity of it is this. The uh, value of an option is just determined by its time value times its implied volatility times intrinsic extrinsic value. So you take these three, multiply those three factors or elements together, and you get your option premium, the value of the option. So by using weeklies uh, for day trading and swing trading, uh, when we see a good setup, we've been able to better utilize the beneficial factors of this time decay that's, you know, embedded in it, volatility and option delta, and it can create, you know, really triple win type trading formula for, for us if, we, if you understand how to use it and you have a system that can use it. So, you know, by doing this, uh, we've, we've put together a high probability trading methodology, uh, which we can incorporate these weeklies for. Now, the first part of it is your time decay that you have to understand. So here's 100%. So they come out on a Thursday, and they're, they have 100% time that first day. And then they tail off. You can see how they just exponentially just tail off real fast until it goes to zero. So you only have eight days until this the value of the option is at zero just based on time decay. So you need to understand that. So every day it, it or about 12%, just the premium, just this one component. Now, here's a table to kind of illustrate that as well, so you can see it. Here's Thursday when the option came out. I did the time value uh, at 1, constant of 1, and then I threw in 300% volatility just to, for an illustration, and I kept the value at 1 constant all the way. So you can see when you multiply these three elements, you get your premium. 
Now, if you're just focused on time value, you can see by an eighth, just this one comp component or element. And let's say if implied volatility moves around, you can see that your premium starts going down dramatically because of the time value. Even if your implied volatility stays the same, that stays the same, your intrinsic, your value. Uh, so here you can see a spike in volatility at 800. And you barely went up from 312 to 400 because see how the uh, time, va time value right here is down to 0.50. So and then you get down to Friday and you're at zero. So here's another quick example just to kind of illustrate this. This is an Apple. These are two different option chains. The one on the top is a weekly. The one on the bottom is a, a monthly for Apple. Same pricing at the time, 630 bucks roughly. And so this at the money option, just to take this example, took the 640 strike right here. And it's got a 58 delta on the weekly strike down here on the monthly. It's got a 55 delta. So they're about the same. And you look, look at the difference, though. You can see this is $5, which each option contract represents 100 shares. So you multiply that by 100. So this is 500 at $505. You can buy that 640 call strike. If you go to the monthly down here, the same 640 call strike would cost you 1,050. And that's because the, mostly because of the time value, pretty much uh, in the in the option itself. You can see the implied volatility is around the same 32 percent so the big difference is the time value in that option and here's another example of this uh, as well just you know out on a table so you can see the hard numbers so at this time when I did this particular illustration uh, we had um, Apple trading at six hundred forty dollars a share and so if you, so one option contract is equivalent to 100 shares so uh, you buy to make this apples and apples you buy 100 shares of Apple it would cost you $64,000. If you made $1, a move of $1, that's $100 profit. So that's le less than 1%, 0.16%. So now if you take the same, uh, instead of buying shares, you go down your buy weekly option with that 50 delta, and it was $500 a contract. You make that $1 profit right there, which equals $100. You make 20% return. So that's 100 divided the fine risk of 500, 20 percent. You go down to your monthly, same delta 50, same strike 640. That was going to cost you 1,050. You make that dollar. That's a 9.52 percent return. So you can see the difference here and how it can help your capital uh, return on your capital. So we're going to go through a few examples here. Um, I've got couple different ones, I, a lot of different strategies, but some that I like more than others. I like strategies, like I said, that define my risk and that also are cheap. Uh, I like to uh, I, I like to look for things that are low cost if I can find them. And also I like to look for that defined risk. I don't like to risk too much. So let me go through some examples to show you uh, what I'm talking about. So here's a Google Here's a Google trade setup. Uh, this was on February the 27th. And this is what I call, this was a retrace breakout trade. And this was based on our, you know, trading system. Uh, but, you know, rather than buying shares, uh, when you see these break, these type of trade setups, you can you apply weekly options, which is a great way to do it. And this was uh, something that was a day trade turn, could turn into swing trade. So, uh, this is just um, to show you the setup, and let's see. Oh gosh. Um, so anyway, this is uh, to show you the actual option spread. So we had a breakout, and we had what we did was we bought the 810 and call against it, and this was put on for 30 cents per contract. So here's the. Um, this particular option, this was the 810 calls, and this is a 10-minute chart, so you can actually see it. So they were going at 70 cents. You could have just bought the options outright, and um, you know you could have done that. Or I like, like I said, I like to you know do things. I like to define my risk and make it really cheap. It's kind of some of the fun of it too, actually. Uh, so I bought the 810 calls at 70 cents, sold the 815 calls uh, against it. They were 40 cents, so that's a vertical spread. And I was able to get into this for $30 a contract. 
uh, well, it went up. That was right on the open, and you can see it went up uh, right about about one o'clock. Kind of made these highs up here, and uh, got out of the uh, spread here. This was the exit. So uh, you know, you reverse out the uh, eight ten calls were sold for two hundred dollars. Two dollars equals two hundred for the option. Had to buy back the short leg at ninety four dollars. So that exit price was $106 a contract, less your cost of 30. So that was $76 a contract. Well, you know that's one contract you could do five, ten, whatever, uh, and you know that adds up pretty fast. But you know your your maximum risk exposure is $30. So that's what I like to know that the most I could lose is 30 bucks. I like that a lot, and that return is 253% return. You know your your profit of 76 net over 30. So that's one trade. Now here's another uh, example. This is a reversal uh, trade on Apple. This was back on the 16th of November. Uh, and this was you know, a day when the, all the markets basically reversed. So this was a reversal day for just about everything. So anything that you did that day, uh, if you went long, you made a lot of money. So here's just the trade setup based on our system. You can see here that um, Um, this is market at the time was 527, 127 bucks. We had a reversal. System went long. This was on the 16th, and I'm just going to go through the progressions of the trade to show you, give you an idea of it. We had a nice volatility squeeze going on. Breakout to the upside here. Trend breakout. So everything was looking nice. Here's your 60-minute time frame. You see the extension of the price move up here, so very powerful moves up. That's what you're looking for, and then you can make some great uh, trading um, profits, uh, either buying the shares or bigger profits with your uh, defined risk options that you use. So, you know, looking at this movement, you know, went from 513 to 528. Nice uh, gain there. That that would be, you know, about a three percent gain. But instead of buying the option, uh, buying the shares, you want to buy. You know, you could look to buy options or option spread. So here's just the progression. Here's that daily chart, 60 minute um, and five minute. I like to look, you know, across. I'll usually use the daily with our trade setups. Then I'll look at a 60, a 30, 15 minute, a five minute. Those for looking for swing trade type of setups and breakouts. And then you know we incorporate our system uh, to do the analysis. And so here's the uh, trade setup. So, uh oh. Okay, so here. Looks like I missed missed that slide. Anyway, so I was going to show you the various trade setups, but on that particular day, we made a cumulative over, I think it was um, over 200%. Um, so here's another. Okay, here's another one. So that slide got left out. Apologies. So here's an option, uh, weekly option day trade. This was on the 27th. Um, this was just last week, and this was uh, weeklies. They were expiring the first, uh, so this had a couple days in it. Uh, and this was based on our system. We had a volatility breakout squeeze using the five-minute time frame. You know, saw this trade set up. Had a trend line breakout squeeze. System fired long. So instead of buying the shares. At 444 bucks or thereabout, uh, you you know went up six about seven dollars a share. Instead of doing that, bought the weekly options. So I bought to open the four. Let's see here, 465 calls, and they had a at the time about a delta of 45, and um, let's see, sold these things out about three minutes later. At um, the excuse me, this should have been the 410 calls. Bought them at 465, sold them three minutes later at four at 565. So it was 100 dollars per contract profit, one contract, and that 100 dollars divided by your capital cost. This should have been 410 right here. And that's over three minutes. So here's the trade here. You can see it on the on the chart. Here's the four. Actually, sorry, these are the 445 calls. And here, bought them at 465, sold them off at 
565. It um, went up all the way up to 805, but had a trailing stop, got stopped out. But you know, it's part of trading. Like one of my one of my members said, you know, trading is like the only game that even when you win, you feel like you lose. So this is one of those trades where you get out here, you're thinking, wow, 100 bucks a contract, that's pretty good, three minutes. And then you look at another minute later, you left another, you know, $300 on the table. So that was a that was a quick little trade there. Here's another here's another look at a, another uh, option expiration trade on Apple on the 21st. Uh, another setup here, just to show you the setup. Here was on our 400 tick chart. Had a short, had a trend line break. System went short. Had a trend line break and short. You know, nice move down. You could have shorted the shares right in here at about 4.54. Uh, you know, nice break all the way down about 4.52 and a quarter. So you know, about two and a half, two bucks move down here. Not bad. And that took about, oh, uh, would that take four minutes? So instead of Shorting the shares, you could have bought the puts. So the 460 puts on that day were going at $605 a contract. That was a 68 delta, pretty nice high delta. Um, and then three minutes later, sold those off at 740 a contract. That's a $135 profit. And that took about four, three, four minutes. So that's a 22% return on capital. So you can see how it adds up. Now this next one is going to uh, so here's just a chart of that 605 puts, sold them at 740, and you can see how it extended all the way up to 11. So you can see the magnitude of these things when you you know have a directional system or some type of uh, methodology to trade it uh, and and to incorporate these weeklies, you can get some great returns. So this this is an incredible one. This is your your winning the um, the lottery type of trade here. Now these are very few and far between, but I just want to show you the example of leverage and that these things are possible. So here's Netflix. This was back on the 16th of March in 2012, and this was on our system breakout here. You know, everything, you know, progression showing you here our system trend line break. Everything set up nicely. Netflix at the time was one, and this is on option expiration day. Hey, so these things get real cheap. Uh, so here's just another shot, 30 minute time frame, nice trend break. Our system went long, this, this is the system going long, here's a trend line break, up she goes. So you could have bought the 107, 108, the shares, and gotten out at uh, 111. So, you know, three, $3, uh, $3 right there on that move, you've done. On this particular day, being the expiration day, you could have bought the 110 calls at $11 a contract, and they were there. You could have bought as many as you wanted, and in about, uh, you'll see in the next slide, in about 10, 15 minutes later, those $11 calls went to $174 a contract. They closed at right around 127, so that was a net gain of your 127 less your cost of 11, so it's the fine risk. The most you could lose is $11, and you could have made 127 or 116. That's over a thousand percent return. Uh, so that just illustrates that you know these things can add up to these huge explosive type of returns on your capital. Uh, and these again are kind of more like your um, winning the the lottery trade, but if you're aware of it and looking, you know you can find them. So here's you can see again on this chart here, you can see how it blows to the upside uh, on the shares. At the same same time, instead of buying the shares, you can see the options were down here at eleven, uh, eleven dollars. You could have bought them at eleven all the way to twenty for you know hour and a half, and then it just took off. So what you want to do on these type of trades, you're looking for breakout momentum breakout. So when you get a squeeze, you know, something, a short squeeze, which Netflix is perfect for, you know, these stocks like Netflix or anything with a sh huge amount of short interest, these can offer some great opportunities with these kind of explosive moves on an expiration. So this is expiration where the options go to, you know, down cheap because the time value is stripped out of it. And I'll, also you get volatility starting to collapse and get stripped out of it. So you can get them down and boom, all of a sudden something happens and away she goes. Um, here's a here's another 
type of setup. Here's a squeeze. I'm going to show you. Let's see. Run out of time. I want to show you another thing I like here. I'm going to go through. Uh, I like to do expiration type trays like butterflies. And I'm just going to show you a um, couple examples of that. So this, I don't have the charts. I just kind of want to show you how butterflies are a great trade uh, strategy for expiration day. Uh, and a butterfly is, is a kind of natural type of strategy. And what you're trying to do is look for where a particular stock or ETF will get pinned on expiration day. So I have put together a couple ways to uh, uh, look at uh, pinning analysis, what I call, and I teach that, uh, and I'll go through that in my weekly boot camp if you're interested. But I want to show you an illustration of these butterflies because they're pretty cool. Um, here is the, uh, this was back on the 14th. What I like to do is I'll start the week on a Monday. So, so, so the option comes out, weekly comes out, Thursday before, I'll wait through the weekend, then on Monday, I'll start looking at uh, the volume and open interest and everything, and I'll look, based on my pinning analysis that I put together, I'll look for a strike that uh, looks like a high probability that it could be pinned on uh, on Friday, following Friday on expiration. So I'll go through all the different strikes, and I'll look at the various amounts of open interest on both the puts and the calls. And I'll try to identify which areas of open interest have the most volume or the most volume uh, of options trading. So I'll look at that the first day. And you can see here, here's the 500 strike, 495 strike. And then you can see here's the, um, the puts are 540. The 500 puts are 750. The calls are 840. So then what I'll do is the next time I'll go do this analysis, I'll also look at the, the uh, butterfly. Here's the butterfly. And so basically what you're doing on a butterfly is you're selling, you're, this is a long butterfly, so you're buying the wings, so you're buying the, when, when you say the wings, you're, you're buying the outside of it, and then you're selling the body. So on a butterfly, you'll sell two. So if, this, if you do a, a long butterfly put, you'd be selling two puts, buying a put, and this is your butterfly. So you can see the value of this butterfly, this was on Monday, was 40 to 70 cents. So you could have done this trade. You could have gotten it to 50 cents, $50. So I like, you know, nice cheap trades. So, you know, you could have the 500, 495, 505 butterfly. You could have gotten in about 60 cents on that particular day. Had some really good volume. So I look at, I have a certain analysis technique I use. So that's kind of what you're looking at. See, cheap, cheap trade. And then, here I'll take you through the progressions. Here's on the 17th. This is Thursday. I'll look on Thursday at right at the close at about, this is, um, I'll look at about 3.45, you know, anywhere from 3.30, 3.45, give myself enough time to execute the trade. Then I'll look again to see what the volumes look like in open interest. And I'll look to see what the various uh, strikes look like. I can determine if I want to do a, a strategy or not. And then the next slide will be the, be the um, butterfly on this same time frame at, this was at uh, 2.45, Thursday the 17th, the day before expiration. And you can see here that 500 I showed you earlier was at, uh, on Monday was going around 50 cents. Now it's at about $1.10, $1.20. And you, you look at the volume, do your little uh, volume, uh, I do. And then I look at that, and then I'll look at it one more time uh, what I'll do a lot of times is you can either do the trade on Thursday, right at the close, you can put the trade on, or if you want, you can even wait until Friday morning, and I'll show you that on the next one, and you get into these things still real cheap the next morning because you've got some of the time value stripped out again, you've got volatility stripped out. You can see the volatility starting to come off here, see the Friday, see it's down, I'll flip back over on Thursday, see the volatility was at about 28. And the volatility here was about 25 on the puts. And so then see the next morning on Friday, see the volatility falls and starts collapsing. So this down to 10, down to volatility of about, um, here's the implied volatility of 19%. So 
it starts falling off, time decay starts falling off, so these type of option strategies. So then you look at where this thing went. This is the 500 butterfly. Let me show you the next chart. So here's the 500 right here, 500, 495, 505 butterfly. Uh, it went from, um, I think, it, let's see, let's back up one second. Okay, on Thursday at the close, it was, you could have gotten to about a dollar 15. On Monday, you could have gotten into this for about 50 cents. And then on Friday, they're pinning this thing right at about 500. And there's a certain technique you can use to, to pretty get close to these pennies. I mean, it's not an exact science, but there are a couple ways I look at it. And you can see here it went to, could have gotten out of this about $300. Um, this actually, um, I think, was screenshot was right at uh, 130. So I think this went to about 340. So this trade, and so the max you would have, you know, lost if you bought these on Monday would be $50. But you can also trade around it, so you probably wouldn't have lost 50 even if it went against you. And you know, you can see what you could have made. So you could have made over $250 a contract, low risk type trading strategy, low stress tra strategy. So that's one trade. Here's the, um, yeah, here it is, right at the close. You can see it went to $4. That's $400. So uh, you could have had a low risk trade on Monday, you know, buying those at 50. And at expiration, it goes out to 400. So that's 350 bucks a contract on a butterfly. Very low risk trade. Here's another example. This one I'll go through real quick here where I'll show you, you could have bought this uh, on Friday morning. Now this particular one, I uh, was going to pin it for 60. So I'll just show you this real quick. Uh, here's Monday. Um, here's the 460 butterfly. Is that about $25 a contract? And then here is um, here's on Thursday. Here's Thursday, the 460 butterfly uh, was about $84, $85. Volatility was about 20.4%. Now look what happens the next day. Here's, um, here's Friday, and here I'm going to take 55 Central. Here's your, your uh, 460 Butterfly. You can see here it's at 58 to 74 cents. See the volatility is about 23, so it's dropping. So you, could, you can wait for these things and put them on in the morning. Now let me show you what happened uh, if you get it right on the pin. So you could have risked about $60 a contract max risk, and you'd cut that, you could cut your loss before before you lose all that by trading around it. And then at the close, um, here's the 460 at uh, 130, it was 260. And uh, well, I thought I had the next slide. So anyway, this went out about actually $300. So you could have made um, 200, 250 bucks for that and just putting that on in the morning. So I like the butterflies, I like a lot of different strategies, but those are low risk, defined risk type strategies. So um, I'm not going to have time for my momentum breakout strategies, but um, you know, please join me on Saturday for my weekly option boot camp, and I'll take you through these and many, many more uh, great strategies. But in summary, the dynamics of these short duration exceptional benefits, such as ability to make money with lower risk, low capital requirements, shortened time frame for trading, higher profits, higher return on capital, and a lot more weekly trading opportunities than if you just sit around for the monthlies. So again, I uh, hope you, you know, take something out of this and can use it tomorrow to help your trading. Uh, please, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Uh, this option trading made simple. That will get you started in the right direction so you can Sign up today. It's 147. Just go to that uh, that uh, URL that I showed you. Let me see if I can get that. Okay. Yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, the way I use my use moving averages, I use them for confirmation of a trade setup. I'll use it as a confirming confirmation. 
and then I'll use it for trailing stops. So, for example, um, I will, you know, if I get into a long, let's say, and it gets above a certain moving average I'm looking at for a breakout, then I'll use that same moving average as long as the price stays above it. I'll just try to stay with the trade and um, use that as kind of my trailing stop reference point. So as long as that price stays above that moving average, I'll just stay with the trade and uh, just watch for a close below the moving average. So you can make it you know, pretty much systematic as well. Uh, doing a better trend line will obviously definitely help your trading because you'll, like you saw on my system, it's mechanical, it's automated. You draw it every time. It becomes a, a system in its own. Well, monthlies give you more time, but you know, it depends on your trading strategy. If, and monthly could be more risky. In my opinion, I think monthlies are more risky. And the reason why is because you can get complacent thinking, oh, I got time, I got time, I got time, and you don't do anything. You just forget about the option. All of a sudden, you wake up and you're looking at an option that's starting to decay in time. Uh, you're looking at the directions wrong. So with the monthly option, you better get your direction right. And you know it's more difficult to get directions in these markets, uh, get it right for you know for extended periods of time. Of course, we've been in a nice uptrend, but uh, that's not always the case, as you know. So, to me, I like shorter duration trades. I don't like to stay in trades long. That's me personally. I like low risk. I like to sleep at night, and I like short-term trades. The main method used. Well, we have our scanner, and it's based on our model. So, I'll look for. Uh, I'm scanning for volatility uh, uh, squeezes. When volatility comes in, you have a consolidation of price. Prices are going sideways and not going anywhere. And then all of a sudden, you get a breakout up or down. Those can offer some great trading setups for major momentum type trades. So that's one component of our scanner. The other is, is when you get a, a, a cycle low. You know, the price comes down to low, or price goes up to high. We call that cycle low, cycle high trade and it'll scan for those as well. So we have two different trades. We have a cycle trades, and then we have the volatility breakout trades. And so the scanner can trade for, uh, scan for both of those, and it assigns values. Um, and so the bigger the value, it goes from a scale of one to five, and it goes for short, it's minus one to minus five. For long, it's minus, plus one to plus five. It's all explained uh, in our scanner model. And uh, then, you know, it'll show you which ones have a potential for uh, bigger movements are up or down. So it's a great tool. Uh, any other questions? Now our trading trading room we have is uh, $147 a month and we have a, a trading course. I've got three different trading courses based on our trading model and the trading model uh, once you buy the course you pretty much know our tra trading model and the trading model within the course now I've got automated into our trading system which is also a, a customized package that you can buy as well. Uh, and that's, um, right now we've only got it working for Thinkorswim, but we'll have it on uh, the proprietary system on uh, the other platforms. For long. Yes, the trading system is proprietary, so in order to get a membership into our room, you know, you'll have to, uh, uh, you know, buy one of the courses so you know what we're doing. And then once you do that, you can set up your, uh, on any platform you're using, you can set up the model indicators we use. And you can incorporate that on, you know, NinjaTrader, um, eSignal, uh, Thinkorswim, um, TradeStation. Yeah, I use TradeStation. I use Thinkorswim. I use Ninja. So it works on any of those platforms. Now we've got a customized version uh, that's right now just only available for Thinkorswim. And that's an add-on to it. And you can use it on eTrade, Swab. Uh, yeah, Metastock, definitely. Uh, er everything. We're currently, I'm currently working with Metastock uh, on the scanner, actually. So they're one of my partners. So um, it's a great, it's a great, easy to use system. And um, if you guys are interested, sign up for uh, you know the special here and get to know me and come look at my courses and join our, join our service.
And again, thanks, Morgan, for having me. And uh, you know, I hope you guys were able to take take away something here today and help you in your trading tomorrow. Good luck. Ciao. All right. Great. Thank you, Larry. We uh, really appreciate your time. As always, you do an excellent job. Uh, so again, you can check that out. The link you typed in is powercycletrading.com slash traderspub. And uh, I'll just uh, type it in again. But we'll post a copy of the recording. I know that um, you know Larry gives a ton of information, and you guys will definitely want to review that. So we'll get a copy of it posted on our website, uh, hopefully either uh, later tonight or early tomorrow morning, and uh, get that out for you. So thanks again, everyone, for being here. And we greatly appreciate your time and look forward to seeing you back for our next event.